Okay, so welcome back everyone. So the last speaker today is Fabian Esler from Oxford, and he's going to talk about quantum exclusion processes. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so it's a great pleasure to be here uh, at the GGI, as always. Um, and I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me and giving me the opportunity to present this work. Um, and what I will focus on is work done uh, in collaboration with Lorenzo Piroli in Paris and my graduate student, uh, Jacob Robertson. And okay, so I'm uh, trying to, I'll, I'll try not to give uh, uh, too many minute details of what we actually have done and uh, uh, try more to give you an overview and uh, basically just point out how this uh, work on open, uh, many particle quantum systems relates to some of the talks we have heard over the course uh, of this week on, on uh, stochastic processes and uh, also uh, like Jean-Marie's talk yesterday, for example. So um, just in order to set the stage, I mean, so this I can uh, run through very quickly because we have already had a, a few talks on uh, exclusion processes this week. Um, Okay, so what are these uh, classical exclusion processes? Uh, so these are stochastic processes uh, describing lattice models of hardcore particles. Um, and uh, the uh, hardcore particles, they live on lattice sites and I, uh, every site is, is either empty or occupied. And then a given um, arrangement of particles on my lattice uh, gives rise to what I call a configuration. And uh, uh, then I can define a probability distribution of having a given configuration at a time t. Um, and this probability distribution uh, fulfills a, a master equation, uh, so which is written here. And these particular exclusion processes um, describes stochastic dynamic dynamics of hardcore particles that uh, can uh, at each time step with a certain probability either move to the right or to the left with the probability p or q. Um, but uh, they are hardcore particles. So for example, uh, this particle here could not move to the right because the side is blocked and this particle could not move to the left because this side is blocked. So that's a very well studied model. Um, now, uh, what's perhaps uh, a little bit less uh, obvious is uh, this stochastic process can be mapped to a non Hermitian spin chain um, in a very simple way. So uh, I can take each configuration, which is this binary sequence of ones and zeros, and associate with it a basis state on a two to the L dimensional Hilbert space. And uh, with each probability distribution, I can then associate a state, which is just a linear combination of these basis states with a coefficient that's given by this probability distribution that I mentioned on the previous slide. Now, it, this is just a notation, but in terms of these notations, the master equation, which I did on the previous slide, takes the form of an imaginary time Schrodinger equation. So d by dt, the state here equals some linear operator acting on this state. And this linear operator takes a very simple form. It takes the form of a uh, quantum spin chain. Um, and uh, okay, so these uh, operators, sigma plus minus, sigma z on side j are just the, the usual Pauli matrices. As you can see, uh, this operator is clearly non-Hermitian because Q is different from P. So if you take the Hermitian conjugate, you don't get it back. But you can just do a similarity transformation um, side by side. And under the similarity transformation, uh, this Liouvillian actually maps to the Hamiltonian of a uh, spinner half Heisenberg XXZ chain. And uh, there has been a huge body of work um, since the 1990s on these exclusion processes because they are uh, lattice discretizations of KPZ, et cetera, and some of the, the big names, uh, Gua, uh, Spohn, Derrida, and, and many others, Jan, yeah. 
<laughs> okay. So the similarity transformation, is it simple? It's very simple. I mean, yeah. so you can basically, uh, it, it's, a, it's a rotation of the quantization axis on, on each side, if you want. Yeah, so it's a very simple transformation. Um, okay, so now that's not what I will talk about here. So I will talk about a seemingly very different uh, subject, namely master equations, but now for open many particle quantum systems. So the setting there is somewhat different. I have a system, which now I take to be, for example, a quantum spin chain or whatever. And then I take this uh, quantum mechanical system and I couple it uh, to what I call an environment. So that's some other quantum system in general, yeah, um, but through some interactions. Yeah, and uh, the, the, the setting is such that you're interested not in this environment, you're interested just in the system. Yeah, and uh, the measurements you do basically would be done on the system degrees of freedom. And this environment uh, in, in many contexts can be some uh, undesirable feature, but also uh, can be used to uh, induce interesting physics in the system itself. So in, in this set, generally, of course, you can write the Hamiltonian as a Hamiltonian, just uh, describing the dynamics of your many particle system. I call that HS. Uh, some other Hamiltonian describing the environment, which I call HE, and some uh, Hamiltonian that describes the interaction. And uh, the system plus environment, so that's my entire universe, uh, so, so that um, is described by quantum mechanics. So the density of the entire uh, system um, row of zero, um, the time evolved state is just given uh, in, in, in this way here by the solution of the time dependent Schrodinger equation. And as I said before, what we're interested in is not the density matrix of everything, we're just interested in the system degrees of freedom, so we're interested in the reduced density matrix um, of the system where we have traced out the um, environmental degrees of freedom, yeah, so and the goal then is to determine local observables in our system. Um, so the expectation value of some local operator acting on the system uh, where you take the trace now over this reduced density matrix. So that's the game, the general setting. And obviously uh, in general, this is a, a difficult problem. But uh, so um, the important thing to note is in, in uh, many examples, the characteristic energy scales or time scales associated with the system degrees of freedom and the environmental degrees of freedom are completely different. So there's a separation of scales and uh, the key is to um, exploit this separation of scales. So there are a bunch of simplifying assumptions that we will invoke now. So we will, uh, first of all, assume that the environment is Markovian. Yeah, and that basically means the characteristic time scale in the environment is very short. So, so the um, uh, decay time uh, for, for autocorrelations, let's say, in the environment is very, very short compared to the characteristic time scale in the system. That means uh, if I integrate out the environment, uh, I can neglect the, uh, retardation uh, when I integrate over the environment mental degrees of freedom. And uh, th that is an enormous uh, simplification. But we need um, a couple of other simplifications. So we have to assume that the back reaction on the, of the system onto the environment is negligible. So in some sense, the environment is supposed to be big. Um, and finally, uh, so we always will think about situations where our initial density matrix is factorized. So there's no entanglement between uh, system and environment initially. And under these assumptions, now you can uh, average over the environment, environmental degrees of freedom and uh, obtain an evolution equation just for the reduced density matrix of the system. That's called the Lindblad equation or a quantum master equation and was derived by these people here a long time ago. Uh, so, and uh, now the most important thing to note, it's a linear evolution equation. Yeah, so it's still very simple. 
Um, it contains the usual for Neumann piece, so the uh, unitary time evolution just of the system degrees of freedom by itself. But then it contains another piece which uh, arises from the coupling of the system to the environment. Um, and it involves these uh, operators LA and LA dagger, which are called jump, uh, jump operators. And they describe uh, the details of how the system is coupled to the environment. Um, okay, so, so this, uh, and, and okay, so, so uh, then uh, there are a bunch of parameters, which are rates, so, so, so uh, positive uh, quantities, uh, which uh, basically uh, tell you um, in, a, in a given time step with what uh, uh, rate these processes here occur. Um, there is one other simplification uh, that we can often employ, and that is if the correlation length in the environment is very short uh, compared to the lattice spacing in the system, and if both the system and the environment are homogeneous, um, I uh, basically obtain uh, a Lindblad equation in this form um, where uh, the, the, the difference between here and here is basically the rates now are the same everywhere and uh, the, the jump operators basically act on the system degrees of freedom side by side. And that's simply because the correlation length in the um, environment is assumed to be very, very short. Okay, and so that's the kind of quantum master equation I uh, have in mind. Okay. So now uh, what we want to do is we want to follow the classical case I had started out with and write this as an imaginary time Schrodinger equation. And I know I can do this because this Lindblad equation is linear, okay? So I can always write, write it in terms of an imaginary time Schrodinger equation if I want. So now uh, in, in the context of this um, uh, Lindblad equation, so, so this is called uh, super operator formalism. It's very simple. So uh, the object um, for which I've written my, my Lindblad equation, this uh, reduced density matrix, is of course an operator on the original Hilbert space, but I can think of it as a state. Yeah, so I basically map each of these basis operators here. So N and M just would be basis states um, of my original Hilbert space. Um, I can map this to uh, a state which I call MN. And then I can just interpret this uh, density matrix in uh, as a state in some larger space. Yeah, because well, operators on a Hilbert space form a, form a linear vector space themselves. And then we can define now super operators which act on these states. Um, obviously I can do that. And we basically have to define two kinds of super operators. Um, the first one arise uh, from operators in the original setting. Is there a question or no? Uh, uh, arise from uh, operators on the original uh, system acting from the left. So I have a term like this in the Lindblad equation. So it was basically here. So left action and I have right action. So the left action, um, I uh, say uh, of, of this operator on the density matrix, um, I map to some super operator, which I can also call O in, in slight abuse of the notation, acting now on my state. And the action of the state I just define in the natural way by this operator here acting on the original state. So that defines this super operator O here, which I have just given miss this guy. And then super, operator, super operators arising from operators acting from the right. I have to work a little bit harder. Uh, so, so this is the object I'm, I'm interested in. And now I want to view this as some super operator acting on my state. And in order to produce what I, what I get here from right action, I now have to uh, model this by left action with essentially the, the transpose of the original operator. So that defines uh, this, the super operators O tilde. And once I have this in hand, I can indeed write the Lindblad equation as a imaginary time Schrodinger equation, 
where this linear operator L now is a super operator. So it maps density matrices to density matrices or this uh, uh, states to states. Um, has an explicit expression in terms of these operators I have just defined. Yeah. So H would be essentially the original Hamiltonian. H tilde would be a second copy uh, arising from the right action, et cetera, et cetera. And um, these uh, Leoville, these Lindbladians, now um, I can view as, uh, if we wish, non Hermitian quantum spin chains on a larger Hilbert space. So if I start with a lattice model of uh, uh, of spin, spin a half, so, so I, I basically would have a chain of spin a halves, so two states per side. So once I double my degrees of freedom, I basically get a second chain. So, 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 so this would be the original spins. So, so this would be the, the, the tilde degrees of freedom. And uh, this Lindbladian, I can think of basically as a two lag ladder uh, spin chain. Um, and um, Notice the I here. Now, as, as was observed some time ago, there are examples where Lindblad equations or, so, or, or Lindbladians uh, in the superoperator formalism um, are just equal to um, non Hermitian Hamiltonians of known quantum integrable models. So, so it turns out yeah, there, there are certain Young Baxter integral models which can be interpreted as Lindbladians of uh, open quantum systems. And well, the, the first, perhaps the, 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 the first example that was uh, pointed out explicitly was uh, in a paper we had with Maria Medvedeva and, and Tomasz Prozen a few years ago, but since then uh, there has been a bit of activity um, and many other instances have um, emerged. So let me just give you this original example. It's the simplest one. So uh, what you consider there is a very simple model. So you take a spin a half uh, quantum spin chain, which is just an XX model. Yeah. So it has a, can, can be mapped to free fermions. And I couple it to an environment. Yeah. So I consider an open quantum system. And the coupling to the environment is through a jump operator uh, which uh, is given by sigma z on each side. Yeah, so I specify the Hamiltonian, I specify the, the jump operator. So that tells me what my original Lindblad equation is, this object here. Okay, and then um, I just rewrite this Lindblad equation now in the super operator formalism. So it's very straightforward. Um, uh, so, so you get a model of two species of spinner halves, as I've explained over there. Um, on these, I can then just do a Jean of Wigner transformation and uh, a unitary rotation of, of uh, quantization axis on, on, on one of the uh, two legs. And the resulting uh, Lindbladian then uh, gives, can be written in this way, where C, J, Sigma are uh, spin a half fermion operators on a lattice. So they fulfill anti commutation relations. And NJ up, NJ down are just number operators of spin up and spin down on side J. And uh, so, so if I didn't have this I, this would be a very well known model. It would be the uh, one dimensional spin a half Hubbard model. Yeah, which is exactly solvable. Now, what I get from the Lindblad equation, I get this extra I. Yeah, simply because I, I consider an open quantum system. So now that doesn't matter as far as the integrability is concerned. Yeah, so the, uh, this, this operator I still can diagonalize by, by coordinate beta ansatz if you wish. Yeah, you just have to be careful about the I. But of course, the, the physical properties um, of this operator are very, very different uh, from the physical properties of the Hubbard Hamiltonian. Uh, if you are from the spectrum of this operator is of course completely different uh, from the spectrum of the Hubbard model um, because this I enters the Bedian-Satz equations and uh, so, so the, the property of 
the distribution of roots uh, to the beta and Satz equations are completely different to the ordinary Hubbard model, but you can now uh, use the techniques of beta and Satz still to work out, for example, uh, spectral properties. Okay, so that was, was an old story. Now, um, but the message basically is, um, so there are integrable open quantum systems. Yeah, Yang backs the integrable open quantum system, and there's not only one, so there, there are families, and in principle, that can be interesting. Um, what I want to turn to now is um, uh, a different question. So, so I have introduced this um, classical asymmetric exclusion process. And so, uh, what people asked a few years ago is, um, is there a quantum version of this uh, exclusion processes? So is there a quantum master equation, yeah, which reduces in some limit to these uh, RZEPs, classical RZEPs? And then uh, the answer will be yes, otherwise I wouldn't be talking about it. But uh, so then the next question I want to ask is uh, these models, which I'm gonna write down now, um, are they perhaps solvable in some way? So are these, you said they are open, are they always open? Do they always have to be open when they're non Hermitian? I mean, they, they could be closed and you could have still well, you know, what I mean by, symmetry and that yeah, sort of stuff. Yeah. So, so what I mean by open is um, I have a system coupled to an environment and my environment is always in the bulk. So they're always open in this sense. I think what you are asking, what about the boundaries? Uh, can, yeah, I, can I? I was asking about the, the spin chain. I mean, the, the Hamiltonian that you get at the end. So your Haber with minus I, is that, the Hamil is that the Hamiltonian necessarily of an open system? Um, uh, so you are. Ah, so you, you're asking the reverse question. So if I take your favorite integrable model, which is not the Hubbard model, uh, no. because for the Hubbard model, <laughs> the answer is here. Um, uh, do I necessarily have an interpretation as an open quantum system? The answer is no. And, and basically the way to see this is um, I, I can think of, um, sorry, I can, I, I, I can think of, as I said, these uh, Lindbladians here as ladder models. And the, the, the question then can be turned into the following question. If I have a two leg ladder problem, yeah, which is integrable, and we know many, many examples. So the Hubbard model is just one of them, but there are, I mean, zillions. Um, how likely is it that I can write the Hamiltonian of my integrable two leg ladder model in this factorized fashion here? And it turns out uh, this is actually, this form is extremely restrictive. So typically you can't do it, but we have these lists of models where, where, where you can. Okay, um, so now what about these quantum uh, exclusion processes? So these were introduced in, uh, in a bunch of papers by uh, Denis Bernard and his collaborators a couple of years ago. And um, what they considered is spinner halves so a chain of spinner halves with uh, whatever boundary conditions you like, um, and you couple it to an environment in this kind of peculiar fashion I've shown here. So some zigzag coupling. So pairs of spins are coupled to the same environmental degree of freedom. That's number one. Number two, uh, there is no dynamics in the system by itself. So all the dynamics comes through the coupling to the environment. And the environment they take to be what they call a quantum Brownian motion. And I come to what that means in a, in, in a moment. So this entire system um, is a many particle uh, quantum system. And um, uh, the, the time evolution is, is therefore just given by the time dependent Schrodinger equation, so it's unitary. And the Hamiltonian that, is, that defines this model is given here. Yeah, so, so you basically couple spin operators or neighboring sites to these uh, uh, degrees of freedom in the environment, which we call kappa j and kappa j bar. They depend on time, so the Hamiltonian is time dependent but we still have a, a, the usual time-dependent Schrodinger equation. Um, and uh, then in order to fully specify the model, you 
uh, specify essentially the uh, correlation functions, all the averages in the uh, environment. And so E denotes average over environmental, environmental degrees of freedom. And uh, so what you say, the average of this uh, operator here is zero. The average of this operator here is also zero. And then the only uh, non-vanishing uh, correlations are, are the ones uh, given here. Um, so the average over uh, kappa j of t, kappa k bar of t prime is uh, local in time. So the environment is Markovian, so it's a quantum ground in motion, but also uh, very short range in space. So this is this one here. And uh, these are operators, kappa and kappa bar. So the, the order in uh, which you take this expectation value matters. So this gives rise to J1 here and J2 here. Okay, so that specifies the model. And if you, if you don't like this uh, kind of quantum Brownian motion, uh, you can replace this, you can model this by uh, some system of, of bosons. Yeah, some, some regular system of bosons. Um, okay, um, now, the time evolution of the full density matrix um, is uh, just uh, given by the time dependent Schrodinger equation, as I said. Um, but my Hamiltonian is time dependent, so time, uh, time evolution operator is like this. And uh, now, what you can do is uh, a number of things. You, you first can say, what, what can I actually say about the time evolution of the full density matrix? So, keep uh, the environment in the game. Yeah, and so, okay, so if you're interested in that, you can ask me afterwards or you can read, read this paper. So you, you actually can do something surprisingly. Um, but what I want to talk about here is I want to uh, look at the time evolution of the reduced density matrix of the system. So I want to average over the environment. Okay, and how do I do that? Um, so I have my evolution equation, uh, so I can uh, take the time derivative and then um, average over uh, the environmental degree of freedom. And uh, then it's a relatively simple exercise, uh, just using uh, these covariances here uh, to work out what this is. And uh, it gives you some linear operator acting on the density matrix of the system degrees of freedom. So it gives you a Lindblad equation and um, the, the uh, Lindbladian is, uh, uh, here has the standard form where the jump operators uh, are basically just uh, the, the uh, products of spin operators uh, that uh, tell us how the, the uh, uh, system couples to the environment. So, sorry. Yeah. But uh, you did, did, did you introduce the hopping condition for, uh, for, the, for the ASEP model or yet, or I got distracted? Maybe no, I got- I, I haven't, I haven't. Uh, so, so we're not at the ASEP yet. So what I have ah, done okay, is okay. I have specified this uh, environment okay, okay. through these two point functions okay, okay. and the one point function is zero okay. and the ASEP will come. Okay, thank but you. But not, not yet. Okay. This calculation is just exact or you have it's, to do it's this- calculus. Uh, It's calculus, it's exact. So there is no, this problem of back reaction of time- No, so that's, that's the beauty of this uh, French formulation as I call it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's equivalent. So if you would model it with a, with a uh, bath of bosons, you would have to make this additional assumptions, but uh, in a sense, by just specifying the environmental averages in this way, you, you cut this out, but it's implicitly still there. So as a mathematical problem, there are no assumptions here yet. Uh, sorry, there are no approximations here yet. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, so this, as I said, um, so interestingly, you you it you can say some useful things about it, uh, but uh, I, I decided not to talk about it in my forty five minutes because it would be too much material. But I, I'd be very happy to. So so we 
for, for, for the case uh, where this J1 is equal to J2, we understand actually a lot. Yeah, so there is a Lindbladian um, for, for any of the moments. Yeah, and we, we know what this Lindbladian is for the ASEP, for the, for the, for the uh, SEP. Um, but the, the, the trouble is, and, and uh, there's a lot of structure in, in these Lindbladians, which is similar to what I'm going to talk about next. And uh, the story basically is these Lindbladians are not Jan Baxter integrable in general, but some parts of them are. Yeah, uh, but uh, you, you the, the, the but you don't use this in order to uh, describe dynamics of, of local observables. You can uh, basically do this in a simpler way. Yeah, you don't. It, it's not based on integrability. But anyway, I mean, so it's 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 a little bit difficult to describe in the abstract. So let's talk uh, offline. Um, Okay, uh, so we have this, and now all I want to do is to answer Andrea's question. I want to uh, now rewrite this Lindbladian in the super operator formalism. So I want to take my, my density matrix and write it as a state. Yeah, and then the notations I use are, are the ones here. So, so these would be uh, operators on the original uh, Hilbert space of my spin halves. So they are mapped to states. And then uh, these four states I call one, two, three, four. It's just a notation. Yeah. So, and, and the reason is, uh, as I said, so I double my degrees of freedom. So I start with two states, but I end up with four. And then having these four states, I can uh, define the usual basis of canonical uh, uh, super operators, which are just these Hubbard operators here. And doing this, as I said before, in general, you, you uh, rewrite the Lindblad equation as this uh, imaginary time Schrodinger equation. And now uh, we come to um, Andrea's question. So the, uh, the Lindbladian um, is given by this expression here. So it's a four state uh, non-Hermitian non quantum spin chain, if you wish. Yeah. And well, it doesn't look like any immediately readily recognizable quantum spin chain to me, uh, but you still can ask, well, is it perhaps in disguise? Is it solvable, etc.? So um, now what, what you um, observe, if, if you look at this expression here long enough, these um, states two and three, um, um, enter the, the expression of the Lindbladian very differently from one and four. So because two and three, you, you, you only have these diagonal operators, uh, E2, 2, E3, 3, but you don't have something like E1, 2, or E4, 2, or whatever. And that basically means uh, that this Lindbladian has an extensive number of strictly local conservation laws. So it, co it commutes with, uh, this operator E22 and E33 on every site. So I have a extensive number, and that means my Lindbladian is block diagonal and I have exponentially many blocks. And uh, because of these conditions, it tells you that any sites which are in a state two and a state three are frozen under the dynamics. Yeah, simply because uh, these are conservation laws. And that means I can think of uh, such sites as uh, describing static defects, so which don't uh, time evolve. And here's the answer to Andrea's question. So the simplest block where um, I start out my initial uh, density matrix, let's say, in such a way that in, it involves only these states one and four, that gives me what, uh, what the simplest block of my Lindbladian, and that block is just given by the evolution operator that I had on my, my second slide, which is the evolution operator of the classical ASEP. Yeah. Yes, it stays diagonal, exactly, yeah. But from, from uh, uh, okay, exactly. Okay, uh, so, so but, but this is how we 
how this model of Bernard and collaborators is related to the classical RZEP. Yeah, so, so in this sector, it's just literally equal to the classical RZEP, but you can uh, say quite a bit more. Uh, so now, uh, if you're interested in the original quantum model, you cannot just start with a diagonal density matrix. So the density matrix is usually uh, off diagonal, it's entangled, etc. So you have to look at sectors with defects. Now, um, what, okay, so, so um, let's, uh, and, and time evolution of, of any initial state in the superoperator formalism is just given by this. Um, now let's start with an initial state where I have three defects. So I have a defect on site L1, I have a defect on site L, and I have another defect on site L2. Now under the dynamics, so that means I have a, a initial state where uh, uh, I have uh, basically on, on these three sides, the specified state, and in between I have some non-trivial entangled quantum state. Okay, I, I, I then can evolve it um, with my full Lindbladian. And because these defects have no dynamics, they're frozen. The Lindbladian in fact can be written as the sum of three Lindbladians, which just live on the intervals between the defects. And these Lindbladians themselves actually can be mapped interval by interval to an open XXZ chain um, with, uh, well, okay, so with, with some particular anisotropy. Um, now, that, that basically means uh, for each block of, of your Lindbladian, um, you uh, can write this as a sum over XXZ chains of different lengths, yeah, with open reflecting boundaries. And then you can use integrability methods to determine the spectrum of the, the full Lindbladian because it reduces to known problems in terms of XXZ. And uh, you can show, actually this you can even show rigorously. Uh, so at late times, uh, this, this quantum model reduces to the classical RZEP. So I start with a density matrix, rho of zero, which is now not diagonal, which is completely arbitrary. And at late times, it becomes diagonal, and the diagonal part evolves with the classical RZEP uh, dynamics, and everything else decays exponentially. Yeah, and uh, so the dy dynamics eventually becomes classical. So, so the way to think about it is you have now an open quantum system. So at intermediate times, you have some entanglement, complicated quantum dynamics, but eventually it just becomes classical, um, is given by the classical RZEP. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So now, um, in case you're still wondering, I mean, so what are these defects? Uh, why should I care? How do they enter the game? Um, so, so, so there is a um, a second way of seeing uh, what they do. Um, so, if I look at um, an endpoint function just involving sigma z, yeah. Uh, this dynamics is as in the classic LASEP. Yeah, and so these, these correlators, so they basically uh, approach uh, stationary values at, at late times and the approach is given like in the classic LASEP, et cetera. Now, um, any uh, correlation function that involves sigma pluses or sigma minuses involves some of these defect sectors. So wherever I have a sigma plus or a sigma minus, I basically pin one of these static defects and I cut my ring into pieces and these decay exponentially. Yeah, and so these quantum correlations decay exponentially to zero, um, are absent in the steady state and the more uh, off diagonal pieces you have, the faster you decay. Okay, now, the obvious question is, can we actually calculate these uh, quantum correlation functions given the fact that I have some underlying integrability, everything is related to XXZ, etc. So the answer is uh, no. So, so let me explain why. So it's hard. So look at the simplest two point function, which is just this sigma plus sigma minus. Um, in, so, so, so this I can express in my super operator formalism um, as this matrix element here. So I have some initial density matrix, which I can take whatever I want to be. So you, you're free to choose this. 
uh, these objects here are these uh, projections of the Lindbladians to these uh, intervals between the defects. So these can be mapped to hard wall XXZ chains. Okay, and I have a product of two, so these are commuting. And then I need the matrix element with this particular state here. Yeah, so, so the, this basically comes from just modeling the trace in the super operator formalism. So I have here uh, state two at site one, uh, state three at site L, and then in between I have this uh, eigenstate of sigma X, if you wish. If, if, if you wish. Um, now, unfortunately, well, we don't know, and I don't think it's known to anybody how to calculate this even for uh, initial density matrices, which are product states, which are unentangled. Now, uh, the closest object that I'm aware that people have been able to calculate to what we need are objects like this. So Loschmidt ab amplitude in the XXZ chain, where you have uh, an evolution operator of this kind, which is very similar to what we have here. And then, uh, oops, you, you would take, uh, in, in, in the case of the Loschmidt amplitude, an expectation value um, in the same state. So this is a little bit like what Jean-Marie told us about uh, uh, yesterday. And um, in this paper, they were able to uh, basically calculate this for uh, particular classes of uh, initial density matrices. Now, th the problem, uh, for us is uh, what, what we need is more complicated. So what we can do uh, using this factorized structure, yeah, so, so that I basically can write this in terms of sums over two independent XXZ uh, dynamics. Um, so I can rewrite the object I want in terms of these building blocks. Yeah, and uh, this is now looks a little bit similar to this Loschmidt amplitude I had here, but uh, the main difference is um, I have different states uh, to the right and to the left. So in terms of a quantum transfer matrix that we also have seen uh, several times during this week. So this would be a two boundary quantum transfer matrix. So, so this would be the usual uh, quantum transfer matrix here. I have, and, and, and this is a trotterization. I need this on the open chain. Yeah, so this still people know how to do. Um, but then um, I need the matrix element of this object between some initial state, which I can choose, and some final state, which I can't choose, which is this product state. And this, um, I, I don't think is known. So, so, so nobody has, has calculated this as far as I know. Maybe Fedor has calculated it, I don't know. Um, okay, so given the fact that we got stuck um, on this quantum exclusion process, uh, then what we did with uh, my student, so we made the problem a little bit more complicated to make it simpler. Um, so what we did is uh, we uh, consider a Lindblad equation where we don't have uh, just the two jump operators we have in the quantum RZEP, but we added another couple of jump operators, which are sigma plus, sigma plus, and sigma minus, sigma minus. So you make the problem a little bit more complicated. Um, then you go through the same steps. You, you get a four state model with the Lindbladian, which is the Lindbladian of this quantum RZEP I had written, plus a bunch of extra terms. Okay, so this is a very simple calculation. Now, the mileage is, uh, and, and the physics of this resulting model is very similar to one of the quantum RZEP in the sense that you have this fragmentation. So you have this uh, strictly local, extensive number of strictly local conservation laws, et cetera. That's all the same. But the difference is uh, this more complicated model now um, has, if you wish, a free, uh, free fermion point. So there's a particular choice of, of rates um, in the master equation uh, for which I can map this Lindbladian on uh, these intervals between defects uh, to a free fermion chain. Um, and and, and uh, by, by just doing a jordan wigner transformation as, as is written here. And uh, the difficulty is, well, it's, it, this uh, free fermion chain is not Hermitian. 
um, that makes life a little bit uh, difficult. So, so you cannot just open your Liebschulz Mattis and, and, and basically um, extract uh, the quantities you want from this. But uh, it, it turns out uh, we, we, we did succeed uh, to use free fermion techniques to uh, obtain um, some determined representation for, for these correlation functions we're, we're interested in. But it's a little bit of, a, of gymnastics, is, gymnastics is involved. And that brings me to my summary. Uh, so perhaps the main message I, I wanted to convey is that certain quantum master equations can be related to yang vexer integral models in interesting ways. Um, and then whenever you have this, uh, you can use integrability actually to determine uh, spectral properties of these uh, quantum master equations, so that's nice. Um, but calculations of observables uh, is, is not such a straightforward matter, and for this quantum RZEP uh, requires uh, to go beyond what is currently known, as I understand it. And with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you. Any questions? It's any question on the almost final slide. Your uh, two free fermion, uh, two, this uh, free fermion C, C dagger. Is this a throttle limit of an eight vertex model? Uh, yeah, I would think so, yeah. So, it is a bit more difficult than six vertex. Um, if yes, absolutely. Uh, so so yes, I mean so uh, it's it, it's if it corresponds to one of the free fermion points of eight vertex, if 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 you wish. Okay. Yeah? But um, of course, I don't use this. I mean, so I use the fact that this is a, is a bilinear form in fermions, and then uh, I I just use free fermion techniques to uh, calculate the um the correlation function i want and and the difficulty i have is uh, well the object well okay so i can i can explain to you afterwards why uh, the calculations are different from the usual uh, calculations of uh correlation functions in uh, free fermion models where, where you have shown and Wigner strings and the complication comes from that. So it's more complicated here and has to do uh, with the state in which you, the, the, the matrix element in, in which you have to calculate. So you have some uh, multi-fermion state to the right, some multi-fermion state to the left, and you want to, uh, and some operator in the middle. Yeah, and uh, yeah. Sorry? Um, ah, um, okay, so I was thinking about the CC and the C dagger, C dagger, so mu, ah, no, just a moment. Wait, 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 Frank, so, sorry. Um, so we considered both cases, mu equal to zero and mu not equal to zero. Okay, so from mu yeah, equal, so equal to zero, it's eight it vertex. Is eight vertex, and the physics is in the end not not that dissimilar. Well, and and in the other case, it's in this family of free fermion models exactly, studied yeah. by Bajanov and uh, Stroganov. Uh, so, so what I should say, the technique we use for mu equal zero, mu not equal to zero, is exactly the same, but the physics is very different. Yeah. Uh, maybe you 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 mentioned it, but and uh, I've overlooked it. So how does it compare the the clearance time with the relaxation time? Of, I mean, the clearance time of uh, of quantum ASAP with the the relaxation time of ASAP itself. So you have a clearance time and then the relaxation. Do the, um, so so let's uh, determine what we mean by these. Um, by these uh, terms, I mean, so so. so okay. uh, uh, the, the, what would you call this this time scale here? Yeah. The decoherence time. So the yes. de okay. decoherence time. So so it basically is given by the. Okay, um, it doesn't scale with the length of the. No, no, the no, no. So it's extremely simple, um, in this case. Well, it, 
uh, yeah. Okay. And that's fine. Yeah. Sorry, can you, can you formulate the quantum uh, ASEP model directly in terms of fermions? Yes. Uh huh. And can you apply the Lindblad equation to fermionic systems? Yes. Okay. So we have actually, if you, if you wish, we have done both. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, so doesn't help. Um, no. Okay. <laughs> So, so, so the only difference is once you look at observables, then as usual, uh, the observables are require different calculations. But as far as the Lindbladian, et cetera, is concerned, you, you, you do both of them simultaneously. Maybe I'm confused, but wasn't there a point that uh, to show that actually some quantum coherence stay alive in the large time limit. So you're, you're thinking about higher moments. Uh, so that is if you look at the full model. Yeah. So if you don't average over the environment. Yeah. And not averaging over the environment means what? Ah, that you look at the. You look at higher moments. Quantum yeah. trajectories. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, so 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 uh, basically, um, you you can look at correlations between spins, which are induced by fluctuations of the environment uh, around the average. Mm. Yeah, and those are the coherences you have in mind. But but so so this is not what I was talking about. I was talking just about the average evolution. Yeah, mm. so these coherences you would see um, if you look at individual realizations before you before you average. Right, and this is a remain a fermionic problem because you're not. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Fabian, I'm, uh, I did not fully understand what is the physical meaning and physical applications of this quantum ASAP. Uh, is it just a game or have, do you have, um, say, solid state physics applications in mind yeah. or cold so, gases? So, yeah. So, uh, okay. So, I didn't speak about it. <laughs> um, so it's of course a it's of course a good question. So so in general, um, so let me come back uh, to this model. So I think this model actually is pretty physical. So uh, this model arose from certain uh, cold atom from the, from the cold atom literature. I don't know, maybe ten years ago or something like this. Yeah. So 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 this dephasing noise. In, uh, in, in spin chains or, or, or free fermion chains. So this is physically uh, accessible, let's say. Uh, and uh, so, so the coupling basically would, would be through uh, to, to external electromagnetic field in that case. So, so that's okay. So now um, with, with regards to the RZEP, uh, so is it a game? I mean, so, this formulation, in a sense, it's a minimal model. So in that sense, it's a game. Because you see what, what we have done here is we have assumed there is no uh, dynamics between the, the spins and the entire dynamics is induced by the environment. And so it's a toy model. Yeah. And uh, basically game was you start with the toy model, you basically try to solve that first, see, what you can do, whether you can learn something. Um, now, what, what we are actually uh, playing with is um, in the large noise limit. So, so uh, by the way, I should say, so this, this uh, coupling of uh, bonds to the environment, so that's probably okay. Yeah, so, so, so this you can achieve. Um, but in general, you would have some, some Hamiltonian parts, so some dynamics in the chain. and that breaks integrability so you 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 get something which is no longer uh integrable but so so the what what, what we are looking at is if the dominant term is basically this one here so i have a strong coupling uh to the environment 
the Hilbert space breaks yeah, into, into blocks. And then you, you basically do something like a Schrieffer Wolf uh, is more complicated, but you do perturbation theory in the Hamiltonian piece to get uh, Hamiltonian dynamics on top of this. And this would work at late times. Yeah, so th th that's basically as far as I th think this has been pushed. So, so as it is, it's a toy model. It doesn't model any experiment or anything, as far as I know. Okay.